Hello everyone, Roy Krakas here. Today I'm going to sh show you how I colored this piece. Of course, forgot to record it the before, but this is what it looks like when it's done. So I'll take you through this, how I colored this 24 by 16 inch photo on photo paper. <laughs> So let's start coloring the grass first here. That's like the biggest area. I like to do that so I don't... I like to do big areas first instead of small details so I don't mess up the details later. This is oxide green. shot this bus in Idlewild, California. It was actually parked on the street, as you can see here. Didn't really like the environment that I was in. I wanted something more interesting. And so, also in Idlewild, I shot this photo, which, believe it or not, is in a neighborhood of Idlewild. There's actually houses left and right of here. Um, and so this was an empty lot and I thought this might be a good spot for the bus. Actually when I shot the bus I already was looking for a spot to place it in later. And so this is the final result of that. I also put the flag on the side. Also as you can see in the original photo of where the, I placed the bus in, you can see it was all green. Actually, sh I think I shot it in the summer. And I, I wanted to do something different, so I decided to turn it into like a fall scene with nice fall colors, orange and yellows and reds, as you will see yeah, a little bit later. However, first I'm coloring still some of the evergreens, the pine trees, green here. Uh, well, not too many of them, at least not in the background. So this will get green, but then the rest I'm going to add some typical fall colors to them. You don't have to be too precise because I just I go over the lines pretty much. In this case it doesn't matter too much. For the bus later it will matter a little bit but not so much for the greenery here or even uh, the tree trunks. So I'm adding burnt sienna which I use a lot to this trunk here in the foreground. The other bark will also get this same burnt sienna. I'm putting it on with a cotton round. I like to use those for especially large surfaces. Later on, for especially for the bus, and maybe some of the branches, I'm go I'm, I'll be using Q-tips, cotton swabs, to add color. Also add a little bit of blue sky later. If I did add some brown accidentally to the sky, I will, I will remove that. This paint takes a long time to dry. It's oil, so it takes several days for it to dry, um, which is a blessing and a curse. Um, in this case, look at it as a blessing because. I can still remove easily paint.
thought it was funny that there's like this face carved out of this trunk here. To do these smaller trunks, I'm using a Q-tip because it's a little bit more detailed work. Now let's add some sky blue. sky was pretty white, may have been overcast, I'm not sure, or it was just overexposed, as you could see in an earlier, as you could see earlier in the original photo, uh, it was white, but the blue sky looks nice here, especially the blue contrasts nice with the fall colors that I will add later. disposable gloves because the oil is it's slightly toxic you don't really want to get it on your hands or fingers when you're holding a cotton round the paint actually can soak through it and you would get it on your hands even if you're holding it on the other side of a cotton round so I always recommend using gloves when you do this like if you're using brushes it's different um, you actually might not touch the paint. I prefer cotton rounds and q-tips as opposed to brushes because it allows me to give it these very uniform looks. You, you won't see brush strokes. And depending on the paper, you, the brushes could scratch the paper, but I think this paper is pretty resilient and would, it would be able to handle brushes also. Actually I have used brushes before too, especially when I put on opaque colors with regular oil paint. I use regular brushes. Q-tip, I'm adding some colors to some smaller surfaces here. some fall colors, reds and orange to my palette. This is Carmine, cadmium orange and cadmium yellow. So Carmine is a very bright red. I'm putting it on pretty roughly, uh, pretty thick too, so it will look very saturated, but later I can tone that down by again going over it and wiping off some of that color with a clean cotton round. So I'm completely making this up. I also don't have a reference or anything in front of me. It's kind of what I have in my mind and what I want it to look like. I 
being from Holland originally, all the trees that lose their leaves. Here in San Diego, uh, it's not much of a winter we have here. Some trees do lose their leaves, change colors, but not as much as elsewhere. That's why I also like the region up in uh, Mammoth, Mammoth Lakes, where the nice fall colors there. And I haven't been to Idlewild yet in the fall or the winter, but I assume that the area will kind of look like this in the fall. So I'm going in between the trunks here, adding also that color with Q-tips. And now it's time to also add some orange. Kind of want to have a like a, some kind of a gradient that goes from red towards the top to more more towards yellow. And now it's time to add some yellow to the trees. Again, I'm doing that with a Q-tip. Also going a little bit over areas I've done earlier, so to mix the colors a little bit. And I noticed there's a little bit of sky coming through the leaves here. So I'm adding some blue in those spots. So now I'm blending a little bit here and there and removing a little bit of color, removing a little bit of more color where there was too much. And that I do with a cotton round. So also I'm picking up a little bit of color here and there and then apply that to other regions. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of blending the different regions with different colors with each other at the transitions and also removing some. Now with an 
IT, I'm removing some of that color of some of these smaller branches. So ITs are very pointy Q-tips. done after the blending with the cotton round because um, if you do, would do it the other way around you actually would add paint again to those branches. Unfortunately, when I recorded this coloring of this photo, I, I didn't use my macro lens yet, um, so I cannot show you a close-up. However, there are some other, a bunch of other videos now where I'm also using a macro lens when I'm doing the more detailed work, giving you a more close-up view. The oils are not 100% opaque, so what I'm doing here is I'm removing some of, especially the yellows, from the black regions to make them nice and black again. Removing that yellow. Bit of that burnt sienna here and there, which got removed when I blended the leaves. I'm also, also removing a little bit to bring in some highlights and to add some like variants to the colors on the bark. Sienna to like stuff that's lying on the ground between the grass, like little branches and maybe some rocks. comes the adding rainbow colors to the bus. But first I'm removing some of that crossover colors that went on to the roof of the bus. I'm using a Q-tip for that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add like Rainbow colors going from the back of the bus to the front. And I'll start with red at the back and then go to purple on the front. I didn't mess it up too bad, so that was done pretty quickly. 
So now I'm going to start with the red and, and the bag using a cotton round and dabbing it on. Surfaces are still, are still pretty big enough to use a cotton round for this. Also, it doesn't have to be put on nice and uniform. It's an old bus, it's rusty and will look nice if there's some structure or texture in the color. So that was the same carmine as I used earlier. And this is cadmium orange. Here you can also see very clearly how it's not completely opaque, and especially the dark stripe there gets covered. But I'll also take care of that later. Cadmium yellow again. going a little bit over the bear but again the, the, the paint wipes off easily I'm also going to fix that later Same oxide green as I used for the grass. As far as I know, Marshall Photo Oils only has one type of green, which is this one. But of course, it's, it's oil, it's paint. You can you can mix colors to make different colors. And I actually have mixed like a, a different different number of amounts of yellows and blues to create different greens. You can also add in a little bit of like the burnt sienna to make it a little more desaturated. And this is that same sky blue. boss looks pretty messy now but that's how I like to work I put on the colors very roughly at first and I need I go back in with like q-tips and cotton rounds and smooth it up a little blend it uh, remove some paint
detail work is done again with a Q-tip. comes the part where I'm removing the paint, blending it, adding some highlights here by removing in some locations more paint than others. You could actually completely remove this paint 100% if you wanted to, but rarely I need to do that. May maybe completely change my mind in how I did something. I would remove the paint completely. with a Q-tip and adding back in a little bit more well, highlights, so to say, removing the paint from this edge here, because the, the light's coming from above. And before I start working on the bear, I'm removing some of that yellow first. I'm adding a, a sepia to the bear. Put it on a little too thick again. So I'm also using the Q-tip to remove it and the structure of the bear becomes more visible again. But you can still see it's brown. And then again that same oxide green for the grass. And carmine for the stripe at the bottom. Now of course this is not looking too saturated because very dark gray underneath as I've mentioned also in other videos if you want a nice and very saturated red you you will have to make sure that those areas when you before you print the photo will be either white or light gray because it's that gray underneath that desaturates the color of the paint Now I'm 
adding back in the rust color. Using again burnt sienna for this. Using a Q-tip. Again, I'm kind of making up the spots here. other uh, VW buses where I put in some other state flags. I have an Arizona bus and a Hawaii bus. I will also, I'll, I'll try to remember to do a few tutorials on those so also just you can see the different types of buses that I did. Gives it a lot of character to this bus to add all those that rust brown. IT and removing some of that paint of the smallest areas where I don't want the paint. So that's the headlights and the blinker. got on the on the logo and then when I was doing that I realized I hadn't colored with within the logo so I'm adding a little bit of that burnt sienna the rust color inside. Cleaning up the regions where I went over the lines, so to speak. Also, accidentally removed a little bit of paint in the in the leaves, so I'm adding back in those reds here. Being extra careful not to go on the roof again, of course. So this is what it looks like when it's done. As you can see, I put a nice barnwood frame on it. If you um, would like to see more of my work, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. Go. Oh. <laughs> Go. You. Reflection. You're moving it too much. Bonus. Reflection.